Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us the blessing so that we may be able to uh, gather together in the name of Jesus Christ to worship our Father God on the first day of the week before we start new week, Lord. Thank you, Father. Open the gate of heaven and give us spirit of revelation and wisdom and also open our eyes understanding so that we may be able to see invisible inheritance prepared by the Lord for us when you're coming. Thank you, Father. We want to worship you in spirit and in truth today. Thank you, Father, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, before we hear the sermon, let me read the book of Psalm, chapter 15, verse 1 through 5. I'm talking about who are qualified to enter the, the mountain, the tabernacle of the Lord. Lord, you shall, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly, and walketh righteousness, and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbites not with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes the vile person is condemned, but he honors them that fear the Lord. He does sweareth in his own heart, and changes not. He that putteth not out of his money to ushery, nor taketh reward against at the innocent, he that do, he does these things shall never be moved. Amen. You are always this kind of person. You're pleased by God. Okay, let me read the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 1 through 10. To this main passage. A very important message we received today, okay? Hearken the words of God today. Don't miss any word, okay? You remember, the you know, devil is the, is the one who steals the words of God so that you may not be able to, you know, put your word, words of God in your heart, okay? Let me read Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 through 10. If there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill you my joy, that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one record, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under 
of the earth. How does it sing under the earth? It's a soul in the hell. Yeah, today's you know, subject is the mind of man and the mind of God. What is different, each other? Totally different. You will understand if you listen to this psalm today. Don't miss it, okay? The heart of man is full of all things of thought, as well as imagination. Long time ago, the Lord God made up his mind to judge the world with the flood, because he saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Not change it. He repented the Lord that it made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. Finally, the Lord swept all men away with a flood from the face of the earth, except Noah and his family. Only a souls, Bible says. Afterwards, the Lord chose Abraham and called him, and also chose. Twelve sons of Jacob, the grandson of Abraham, to be his people. That is Israel. But they also forsake the Lord God to trust the, to trust the nations of Gentiles as their husband. It also grieved the Lord at his heart as the time of Noah. The Lord God sent Jeremiah, his prophet, to judge them, and judge them using Assyria, Babylon, and Egypt, and so on, that they served in the Roman Empire. God spoke unto them of what is the heart of man. Listen carefully. You have also heart, right? What is the heart of man? Not talking about heart of cattle, heart of dog, heart of man. That is, you know, created in the image of God and likeness as God. How is that? Examine yourself. The heart is deceitful above all things, you know, even above, you know, dog and cat, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. Now, even the Lord is searching your heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Yes, whatever you do, you will eat the fruit of what you have done. Yeah, God is a righteous one. Yes, God is still searching the heart of, of man to pay them according to what they do. When the Lord God made the first man, Adam and Eve, in his image and in his likeness, anything evil couldn't be in their heart. In their heart, anything other than the knowledge of God couldn't occupy therein. So when the devil visited them, and put a different thoughts. They received the thoughts of the devil, ended up with sinning against God. Since then, their heart has been filled with the evil thoughts from the devil, who was ever born in the world. Yes, same, no difference. The scripture testified of the evil thoughts they came in their heart 6,000 years ago in the Garden of Eden. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her 
and he did it. Yeah, since then, 6,000 years ago, all men have been born from the first man with such kinds of thought in their heart. In other words, in their DNA. Apostle John testified of the three kinds of evil thoughts inherited from the first man, Adam and Eve. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, you know, all, you know, all is all, right? All that is in the world, listen very carefully, three kinds of things. Lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It's not of the Father, but is of the world. That is, came from the devil. And the world passes away, and the lost thereof. But he that does the will of God abides forever. You know that? Very important message. When the woman saw the forbidden tree was good for food, the lust of flesh came in her heart. When it was pleasant to the eyes, the lust of her eyes came in to her. When it was desired to make one wise, it deprived of life occupied her heart. Since then, all men and women have been inherited with these three evil things and have been so busy to satisfy with those. Yes, every day, we are seeing what they're doing. The lust of the flesh is manifested in the form of self-preservation. It is very you know, hard terminology, right? Self-preservation. The lust of eyes in the forms of self-reproduction. The pride of life manifested as self-satisfaction. Yes. It's kind of, you know, a professional terminology, but, you know, same thing. Lust of flesh, the lust of eyes, the pride of life, same thing. And the heart of man has been full of selfishness. Yeah, all self, self, self. Self-preservation, self-reproduction, self-satisfaction, all starting from the word self. Selfishness. That's why. Every woman. In the world, selfish. The scripture are full of the message of judgment spoken by the prophets as well as the apostles of Jesus Christ to be done at the time set by the Lord God. King David understood of the lust of man, three kind of man, three kind of lust, and testify of it. For a man which at thy hand, O Lord, from man of the world which have their portion in this life, and whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure, they are full of children, and leave the rest of their substance to their babies. Three, he found that three kind of, you know, lust and pride. I don't know whether you follow me or not. Try to follow me, okay? Concentrate your heart to listen to the words of God. If not, the words of God will be taken by the devil. That's why you have to, you know, whenever you come to church, you know, ask the Lord to give you understanding. God had known of the descendants of Adam and Eve to be born with such kinds of lust within them so that they couldn't help a living in the midst of the lust. Yes, everybody. All the people in the world live in the midst of a lust. God has been long suffering for thousands of years as in several days until he destroyed the devil that brought such kinds of evil thoughts to the world. To take away the evil thoughts, which is rooted in the heart of man, the Lord God had to kill his only begotten son, in the name of Jesus. For the sin of the world, finally, after 4,000 years, 
had passed away. She was manifested in flesh in the form of man in this earth in the name of well, well known to us, Jesus. God became a man to take away all this kind of lust, right? It was rooted by the devil. The Christ appeared in the name of Jesus and he proclaimed the gospel before he raised Lazarus from the dead, saying, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believed in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. He believes thou this. He asked, you know, the Martha, you believe it? What about you? You believe what Jesus said to you? It was a good news towards the world that have been in death for a thousand years as the corrupted body of Lazarus. Before the Lord Jesus appeared for the, to the world, Jesus testified of the way to cleanse all kinds of sin which is rooted in the heart of man is only with his precious blood. Only through believing in his death and resurrection, Jesus spoke unto his disciples of this. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. As Apostle Paul encouraged the saints of Ephesians that were saved through believing in the Lord Jesus Christ to make their conscience purified. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, conversation means the former behavior, right? Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Yeah. Even born again Christians of the spirit have to dwell in the sinful body of the lost until they put off the body of a sin. In the day of Christ, in the day of rapture. The only way to put off the old man to please God is to be clothed by the new man. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. Adam is first man, old man, new man is Jesus. That's why Jesus called all the last Adam. And to be clothed with the new man is to be clothed with the whole armor of God that is the words of God to be fed and led by the Holy Spirit. We have to speak according to the utterance by the Holy Ghost and also have to walk in the way of righteousness by the Spirit. We don't have any right. Whatever we say, whatever we do, we have to lead by the Holy Spirit according to the words of God. We were slave of the devil, now we are, we are now servant of Jesus Christ. He is the Lord. Lord means what? He is the owner of us. In the main passage, Apostle Paul testifies of being clothed with a new man in more details unto the Philippians, saying, not live only for themselves, but with live with consolation for others and comforting of loving Christ in the fellowship of the Spirit, to be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, nothing to be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness, humbleness, right, of mind that each esteem other, other people in the church better than themselves. He also encouraged them not to look every man on his own things of others. 
He urges them to let the mind of Christ be in them to live being clothed with the new man, Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost is still encouraging now towards us with the same message. Can you hear it? The message, why? We have to obey, to follow. We have to work in the message in daily life. He also testifies of the mind in Christ Jesus is in the form of God, but he made himself of no reputation. He's God. He was a word in the beginning. He was God. His reputation. He just forsake in you know, a reputation, you know, to come over to the earth in the man, in the form of man. But he made himself of no reputation. He doesn't have to come down to the earth, forsaking glorious dwelling in heaven. He doesn't have to. He forsake the thoughts of his self-preservation to be a man, to preserve the sinners. And he humbled himself and obeyed the Father God to die on the cross of curse. He forsake self-reproduction. He was full of this heart to bring forth eternal reproduction of man in heaven and earth. Yes. Now self-reproduction. He came to the earth to give us reproduction, giving eternal life through his death. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and the things in earth and things under the earth, even the things in the hell. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. As you see, now many people call Jesus Christ as the Lord, but when Jesus comes, they will call Jesus as their Lord in the hell or in the lake of fire. Finally, everything shall bow to him, calling him the Lord. It is a matter of time. This reason every man has to believe in Jesus Christ. It's a time when we call him the Lord. Jesus spoke unto his disciples to follow with the thought in him. In other words, they couldn't follow Jesus without the mind of Christ within them. What is Christian? Christian is the one who follows Jesus. To follow Jesus, we have to do something. Yeah. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And he that taketh not his cross and follows after me is not worthy of me. What that means, yeah. The thoughts of the Lord Jesus was self-denial instead of self-preservation. And not self-reproduction, but reproduction of the children of God, giving them eternal life through his death. Totally different. His another thought was not the self-satisfaction, but forsaking his reputation of a king of kings and lord of laws to save the world from the hands of the devil instead of the pride of life. This is the reason why the Father God exalted him to the highest glory. We are the one who follow Christ. If we behave just like Jesus Christ, we also shall be exalted by the Lord. What is Christian, as I mentioned to you? He is the one that worked in the world with the thoughts as he worked. As Jesus worked. Christian has to put down self-preservation, self-reproduction, and self-satisfaction, but to preserve others 
and bring forth rep reproduction of the children of God through preaching the gospel and tries to study a satisfy God instead of satisfying themselves, who wants to save all men and let them come unto the knowledge of God through preaching the gospel of salvation as well as the knowledge in the words of God, the Lord Jesus will reward crown unto them and work with the thoughts at the judgment seat of Christ to make them reign with him forever as the royal priest. Apostle John testified of the Lord Jesus coming to reward. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Amen. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, you are a real righteous God. Yes, right. We want to take the life instead of death. We want to take blessing instead of curse. We believe all the life, all the blessing is in the words of God. But in the world, everything, all things are death and curse, Lord. We want to make up our mind to follow Jesus, understanding your will. Bless all of us to understand the will of God so that we may be able to walk in the words of God. That is only truth. Nothing but the truth, Lord. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, everybody say, Amen.